So you read the book. I read the book <laughs> several times. <laughs> yes, exactly. <laughs> Thank you for all your help. You're welcome. Much appreciated. Uh, I wanted to and and get your take. There's in chapter ten, which is uh, the section is called flight notes, okay. and I I called it irrefutable truths to build a dream business. I love it. Yeah, and so I want to talk through these briefly because what I'm finding is this section of the book kind of gets hidden, so to speak. I have, I've had a lot of people read my story and read some of the contributor content and I think the, the days of like reading a book cover to cover are probably gone. And yes. So I'm like, wait, this is a really good part. I want people to know about it. <laughs> take exactly. So the first one is passion. Okay. Uh, so passion will carry you through. Um, and the, the, the basic connotation here is don't start a business to make money. <laughs> okay, I love it. Start a business because you're passionate about the idea. Now obviously you need to make sure that that passionate idea possibly can make money. Right. But if you're just starting a business to make money, you're going to find that you work twice as hard as an entrepreneur as you did in corporate. And working eight hours a week starts to get tiring after a while if you're not passionate about it. Absolutely. So anything to add or thoughts that come to mind related to you or your business and your passion. Yeah, thank you. So one of the things that I've learned about myself and working with women through the vision boarding process is the more passion is basically this bubbling up of emotion and connection with what we're doing. And when we follow that, that carries us through the times that we're tense, tired, forgetful, annoyed, depressed, you know, it, that passion and that energy, when we remember that, it helps us go over those things and look at them as speed bumps, not stop signs. I like that. Speed bumps, not stop signs. Yes. Very good phrase. Yes. I love it. <laughs> Be imperfect. Hopefully Please. conversations we have about this. Ready, fire, aim, right? Please mess up. <laughs> Messing up means you're trying, and if yes. you're trying, you care. And yeah, I mean, some of the greatest ideas actually come from being imperfect. Things that you didn't even think about before, and you go, that was a mistake. And then you say, oh, but that's perfect. Yes. And that, I, I just find that taking the pressure off of being perfect and allowing yourself to be imperfect is brilliant. And isn't Audrey Hepburn that said imperfect is actually, when you break it up a little, it's I'm perfect. <laughs> so you win either way. <laughs> You'll never have it all figured out. This is one of my favorites and something I've certainly learned throughout my entrepreneurial career. I see a lot of folks that, you know, they write the uh, illustrious business plan and they've got their path and it's, it's going to go like this and, you know, I've got the whole thing mapped out. Mm -hmm. Throw that out the window. <laughs> Throw it out the window. <laughs> it's going to change yes. every 10 minutes. Get used to Along it. those lines, determination. <laughs> Yes. <laughs> Keep going. Yes, exactly. Because you're going to hit lots of speed bumps. Yes. And I see this so often, I'm sure you do too, Vanessa. A lot of women in particular, we, we tend to be a little more risk adverse. And I see so many women who have spent several years on their business and they're so close to that breakthrough. I always say this and mm -hmm. we say this. It's like, I know I'm on the edge of something. Yes. Right? You can feel it. Yes. And I, and I routinely say, I know I'm not there yet, arrived, mm -hmm. obviously it's a journey, but I, I know there's one little piece of the puzzle that I'm missing. Mm -hmm. And I haven't figured out what that piece is, but I'm going to figure it out. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to go as fast as I want. Right. Right? And having a team, having a support group with you and people to bounce ideas off of really helps you blow through some of those moments. Yes. It's a lot of pressure to think you have to have it all figured out. And it is a real act of surrender and trust in yourself and in your village that's supporting you grow this idea. Be <laughs> scrappy. <laughs> You're going to have to be resourceful as an yeah. entrepreneur. And there's going to be great times and there's going to be tough times. Oh, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I love scrappy because it just, you know, you think of um, bootstrapping and scrappy to me means being creative as heck. Yeah. I mean, that is resilience, resourcefulness, that's all based on being creative. And creative doesn't mean you're sitting around coloring or painting. It's really thinking of new, different ways to do something and to move through something yep. to Absolutely. accomplish your goal. So, so true. Boundaries. Oh, also gosh. my favorite word. <laughs> Big time. Set boundaries. We see this so often of 
you know, whether you're dealing with a vendor or a colleague or a potential business partner um, or a client, I mean, usually it comes up in client situations, yes. right? Yes. Is how do we say no gently <laughs> and make sure that everybody, you know, as women, we want to make sure everybody feels good, yes. Yes. right? But ultimately, who ends up feeling bad right. when boundaries have been overstepped? We do. Yep. And I think that the thing that we shared in our in your booster the other yeah. day was boundaries are about a lot of different things, but one of them is setting the expectation. For you, you know what you're giving, we know what we're doing, but we also need our clients to know what we're doing and we need to guide them a lot of ways in what we expect from them. And that solves so many problems. Yes. Yep. Setting proper Being expectations. Clear. Yeah. Here's how I work. My favorite phrase. Here's, Here's how I work. <laughs> you know, it's like don't be afraid to present your pricing and you know exactly. the system and the program. It's like Here's how I work with people. Yeah. It's that simple, right? Yeah. All right, moving on here. Watch out for shiny object syndrome. Oh gosh. <laughs> I have that for the creatives in the room. <laughs> wink, wink. <laughs> that's, that's a, I mean, how do you deal with that, Vanessa? I mean, you know, new ideas come up. How do you note them? How do you not, you know, let them go, so to speak, but, but also, you know, think about putting them in a parking lot for future. So a big part for me that's always been a little bit challenging is I see the shiny objects everybody sees and then I see the ones that nobody sees also. So I'm like doubly like, wow, there's so many amazing things out there. But what I found is the more I focused on my business, and I think this is the key, the less afraid I have become of missing out on something. And the shiny object syndrome is directly related to what we're afraid of, not what we love. Mm -hmm. And so the we focus, I trust myself, now I know, now those ideas are actually getting channeled into my business rather than being distractions. I'm not afraid of the niche market that I'm going to miss out on or that someone else is doing something better or more than me. So those yeah. shiny things are not so shiny to me anymore. Now I can see them for the distractions they are. And again, all that energy gets channeled in a positive way yep. and it's in a much better intention, which is I trust myself, I trust my idea and I know I'm on the right path. Absolutely. So, and so again, shiny objects are related to fear of what we, we don't have, what we're going to miss out on. So it's just a shift how we think about things. So true. I love that. Uh, be sincerely interested in others. This might sound like a weird kind of cliff note piece, but I, I really, it's something I attribute to my success of really engaging with people. And I give you some tips in here about how to remember people's names, mm -hmm. which is again, a very, very simple thing, um, but has served me so well in my business. You're very good at it. I'm very <laughs> impressed with how you do that. <laughs> you know, there's 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 tips in the book, so buy the book and read it. Read it. Trust your instinct. Oh course. yes, yes. That's you know. It, I mean, it really does relate to what you talked about, shiny object syndrome mm -hmm. and fear of missing out and all these other things that come. I, women are, we have amazing intuition. Oh, yes. I mean, men do too, but we're a little better at paying attention to it when we want to, right? And well, I think that trusting your instinct is, is really trusting your emotion, your emotional baseline. Yeah. How does something feel? Like if we have our children, we know, I have a good feeling about this kid going, my kid going to someone's house or I don't, we trust it. Mm -hmm. But when we're in business in a meeting and I have a feeling about a business person, I trust this, this feels good or it doesn't, we don't listen to that. Mm -hmm. We say, oh, but the guy could invest in our company or he knows so many people or she does this. Who cares? It's all out of fear. So trusting your instinct, again, is directly linked with trusting ourselves, our own ideas, our own voice, and our message. Yep, so, so true. It comes through so much more clear when that fear is out of the way. Exactly, yeah, I, I have quotes at each of the ends of these little thoughts here. Follow your instincts. That's where true wisdom manifests itself by yes. Oprah Winfrey. She knows very she knows well. She very well, sure. exactly. Sure. She's been through a lot. Follow through, again, another very simple one, but I am so shocked in business <laughs> and in life, how few people actually follow through. They say they're gonna do something, they do it. 
you meet them, they follow up. Mm -hmm. Do you find that as well, Vanessa? I find that that is much more productive. <laughs> <laughs> right? <laughs> Saying you're going to do something and not do it? Yes. And what I have found, though, is this group mentality when people don't follow through, and I'm going to, it just kind of goes back to some of the things I've been part of my own philosophy, yeah. is that people don't follow through because they don't feel like they matter. And this is a weird, this ah. really relates to ah. women. Yes. Yeah. So if I say, you invite me to an event and I don't follow and I say yes, but then I don't show up, I'm thinking, I don't matter, she's not going to miss me, it doesn't mean anything to the group. You might have been thinking, Vanessa's amazing, she has so much of a contribution to this group, her energy is great and there's someone I want her to meet. So now I don't show up for you, I don't show up for the opportunity, but I don't show up for myself. Mm -hmm. And so follow through is about showing up for yourself and recognizing that on the other side of it, there's opportunity there and that you do matter. So I think a lot of women have that a little bit skewed, if I can yes, say. Yes, absolutely. And if I may just add, I even experienced this last night, to be honest. <laughs> It Aww. comes up, but no, really, uh, no, um, on my part. So I registered for an event, mm -hmm. um, a, an awards ceremony for which I was nominated. Me and lots and lots of other amazing <laughs> women. And uh, it, I, I honestly, I, I parked the car downtown San Diego. Oh gosh. Driving, parking, traffic. <laughs> on I, a Thursday night. I know, exactly. And I was tired. And I was walking, you know, through the parking lot to the event. I'm like, I just like don't want to be here right now. I don't want to follow through and show up. I just had that moment of like, ah, I just want to go home and like lay down. <laughs> and I did follow through and I showed up and I came in and you know, once I'm there and the energy, I mean, there were 650 amazing women there. Yeah, oh, I mean, it's a wow. big event. And maybe wow. that was part of my like, ah, Lots and lots and lots of people. Yeah, it's intimidating. Yeah. It's well, intimidating. you know how much energy is going to put out, and if you don't feel like you have it to give, I get it. Yeah. 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 But I did follow through, and it was Thank amazing, you. and I met new people, and it, it was great. So follow through. All right. Stay Almost clear through. of get rich schemes. Oh, please. <laughs> they're such a waste of energy, and and your beautiful creative um, drive. It's just there are a dime a dozen. So many pro expensive, like yeah. thousands and even up to a hundred thousand dollar programs oh. where someone is basically selling you their lifestyle. Exactly. Now, I, I mean, there are some great programs out there and I, I, I only m mentioned by name one person in here that I'm sure I'll get uh, <laughs> tagged on. Like who? No, okay. <laughs> a la Tony Robbins. No. And he uses some great content and I don't mean he to does. throw him under the bus, but you know, hundred thousand dollar programs, I just, I always challenge people, do you really need that right. is the content really there if the content is there then fine mm -hmm. but so many people are selling hot air frankly yeah and I this is a pet peeve of, of mine as well and and that is not everybody really truly wants to be Tony Robbins they don't want that responsibility yeah. they may not even really have that that uh, plethora of energy and emotions and ideas like it's not a put down in any way but it's really learning pe for people to, yeah. to get clear on what they want and is it a life of significance or is it two, ranch two mansions in Rancho Santa Fe like what's really gonna make you happy and put your money where you're gonna be really happy and learn for where you're at in your life not Tony, Tony Robbins life and I really strongly believe that and I'm with you on that a thousand percent there's amazing programs with great content that will help people lead a life of significance that is their own life, not someone else's. I, I just feel like so many people want to buy into something, to somebody telling them you can do it, yeah. right? I mean, this proliferation of coaching, right? Yeah. It's like, you can do it, you can do it. Okay, can you pay me $100,000 to tell you you can do it? Sure, <laughs> yeah, I, I can do that, right? We know, we'll tell you, we'll send yeah, you a PayPal address. Exactly, right now. Yeah, send it to us. We'll do that yeah. for you. I know, exactly. Oh my 
goodness. Yeah, yeah, I go. All right, a few more. Keeping doubters at bay. Staying away from the negative Nelly. Yes. That's a big one. My mom had the cutest um, example. She said, when you're growing a, a tree, a baby tree, you put barbed wire around it. Not because you're being a jerk to anybody, but because you are to protect that little beautiful tree from to, so it can grow. You want to keep out the animals and whatever else you're keeping out so that it can really um, flourish. So it, it is important. Yeah, just just let it go. I've lost a fair number of friends over the last 13 years mm -hmm. being an entrepreneur of those people that didn't quite subscribe to my my mantra. So yeah. we've talked about this so much. The imposter syndrome. Oh my gosh. Oh, I mean, this, this is, is just oh for women. I mean, and I'm sure men go through it. They do go through it. Yeah, but yeah. why? I mean, I guess my tribe is women, and so I'm mm -hmm. I'm talking to women. I I won't go into detail on this because this we could talk for thousands of years on it yeah. and the quote from Maya Angelou is you know 100% we've all heard this so yeah listen you're yeah. smart enough you're good enough yeah. you've got it just do it yeah be real be honest no fake titles and be yeah exactly. life integration piece this is also my soapbox you know work-life balance believe me it's so <laughs> I say no <laughs> I don't think there's a such yeah. a thing <laughs> there isn't I mean and, and the connotation of work-life balance is Life is here and work is here and you know, you feel schizophrenic, right? Yeah. You feel like you're having to keep these things separate. So my mantra of course is integrate as much as possible. Not a, always easy to do as an employee, mm -hmm. but much easier to get to mm -hmm. as an entrepreneur. Absolutely. You know, bring your kids into your business, you know, have them work with you on your business. I, I'm so blessed that that was 1000%. My, my dad, you know, it started a business when I was born and I grew up in his business and there was, I mean, my whole life was integration. There was never any delineation between one thing or the other. It's still one life. Yeah. So no, I think that's a great point and it, it does, to your point, it brings a cohesion to your life because you're also not if you're bringing work-life balance, it's about being all of you all of the time. If you think you're going to work and you're this persona and then you go into your life and you're this persona, it's maddening not only to you, that's I think feeds the yeah. imposter syndrome, yes, yes. is this idea that I'm this way at work and I'm this way in life. That feeds this I'm a fake kind of feeling. So, so just be yourself in each way and then it integrates and balances naturally. Yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Last All but right. not least, find support. Oh gosh. <laughs> we talked about this a little bit. You know, find your tribe, find those amazing individuals who have the dreams and passions that are similar to yours. Join a co-working space. Mm -hmm. If you don't have a great co-working space in your city, start one. I know this little place called Hera Hub. It's pretty amazing. You might want to check it out. Bring it to your city. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I think about it all the time if I were to move. Uh, you know, I have some ideas of where I want to be yeah. longer term, and I think, but if Hera Hub's not there, what would I even do? I mean, it, aside from the friends, yeah. but the resource and the support and the community is essential to having a healthy, uh, growing business. Absolutely. Yeah. Awesome. Thank yeah. you for dialoguing about my book. That was fun. <laughs> yeah.